Hi, everybody. I hope you're all doing so well. Since we don't have school next week on Monday because of President's Day, I wanted to record a video to go through the material for next week, or if you're watching this week. Um, so that way you are not left on your own to have to figure out all of the information for your homework assignment uh, to be your quiz and your project. Okay, so hopefully this can help um, with any questions you might have. But of course, I'm always available during uh, via email or we can find a time to Zoom if you are having a little bit of trouble. Um, but hopefully this will just be like a mini class and uh, hopefully this will help you. So this is going to be a short video, about 20 to 30 minutes on unit 2B. And we are still uh, within unit two, so we're focusing on natural attraction. So for this unit or for this PowerPoint, we're going to do a little bit of a warm up. We're going to focus on the pronunciation of our new vocabulary words, although the pronunciation recording for this unit is up on Canvas. You can find it under modules week five. We're going to talk about the meaning and use of voc vocabulary words. Um, we're going to pretend to do a little bit of practice and then we are going to close this class. So this warm up, we are going to focus on three questions. What are some notable birds or animals from your home country? What are some serious threats to birds and animals around the world? And is there anything we can do to combat these threats? So I want you to think about this and brainstorm this in your own time. So for example, what are some notable birds or animals from your home country? For me, a notable bird is the bald eagle. That's the United States symbol. Um, and so the bald eagle is actually pretty rare, but for me, my um, grandparents lived up in Northern Minnesota, which is the not exactly the border of Canada, but close. And so I still go up there, even though my grandparents are no longer with us, um, uh, almost every summer. And I see bald eagles in the wild a lot. And it's really, really, really special. Um, I would say, uh, that's the most notable animal from the, or at least bird from the United States. Now I want you to think about the answer for you and you don't have to share that with me, but I'd like you to share that with someone. So whether they're, they're, that's a friend, a partner, a, a child or somebody, uh, talk about some notable birds or animals from your country today. What are some serious threats to birds and animals around the world? You can pause this and write down some in your own time. Some serious threats to birds and animals are, of course, uh, global warming, the warming of the oceans, the changing of the seasons, um, the different migration patterns that are affected, the different food resources that are affected, definitely deforestation in different places like South America, Africa, um, even, of course, here in North America. So animals' habitats are destroyed. Um, there's a lot threatening birds and animals right now. And is there anything we can do to combat these threats? I ask myself this a lot and a lot of students have done presentations on this in another one of my classes, but I think trying to figure out how to leave as little of a footprint as we can. Um, so thinking about things we can do in our own household, like recycling, um, using a uh, cloth instead of paper towel, like for paper towels and things, um, focusing on being eco-friendly, uh, making sure that what we're using is sustainable, environmentally friendly, um, and making sure that we are leaving as little of an impact on the world as we can. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. So in the spirit of the warm up questions, we have 10 vocabulary words that are connected to these questions and connected to the unit. So let's go through the vocabulary pronunciation. So this first word we have is noble, noble, noble. And traditionally noble has meant like upper class um, in places like England. Uh, nobility is the noun form of this as well. The noble is um, an adjective. It can also be a noun. And noble generally means if somebody is noble, they are honest, they're tr trustworthy, they uh, have good morals. But historically, noble has been allotted to like princes and princesses and people from the upper class. 
this uh, ennoble has no uh, has two uh, syllables, no and bull. This next word we has have is commence. Commence has two syllables. Commence. To commence means to start. It's a formal way of saying to start. So I can say we will commence our class in five minutes. This next word is bounce. Bounce. And bounce has one syllable, okay? Bounce. And it means when something goes up and down, like we are bouncing a basketball. It is a verb. This next word, absurd, is an ad adjective. Absurd. Absurd. Absurd has two syllables. Absurd. And it almost sounds like S-E-R-D. Surd. Absurd. Absurd means ridiculous. It means weird, strange, ridiculous. So for example, if I said, okay, class, you need to finish a book that is 500 pages by tomorrow, you would say, Emily, that is absurd. That is crazy. That is ridiculous. This next word is prominently. Prominently. Prominently has four syllables. Prom. I, nent, li, prominently. Prominently means something that is easy to be recognized. Um, prominent itself, prominent, is um, easy to be seen, easy to be recognized. Um, so you could say that the Empire State Building um, is prominently featured on the New York City skyline, prominently. Or you could say something like, hmm, she is a prominent teacher at the school. Everybody recognizes her. This next word is evolution. Evolution. Evolution has four syllables. Evolution. Remember, T-I-O-N sounds like S-H-U-N. Evolution. And evolution is the change, the natural change of something over time, so gradually. So evolution is the natural change of something over time. You can, if you live in San Diego, you can go to Torrey Pines Park and they have these beautiful cliffs. And through evolution or over time, these cliffs have gradually eroded, so it's gotten smaller. So the cliffs have evolved into what they look like today. This next word, word is harsh. Harsh. Harsh is kind of a hard word because it's right up here. Har, harsh. Harsh has one syllable. Harsh. Harsh means something that is difficult, something that's unpleasant. So you could say, what she said to me last night was very harsh. It made me feel badly. Okay harsh, something that's unpleasant, something that's harmful. This next word is undergo. Undergo has three syllables. Undergo. Undergo. It means to experience something that's usually difficult. Um, for example, un and undergo is a verb and it's an irregular verb. So you could say, last year I underwent surgery. I have undergone surgery. I will undergo surgery. Our second to last word is ritual. Ritual. Rit, you, all. However, because we have the T-U sound, it sounds like rich, R-I-C-H. Ritual. Ritual. We don't say ritual. Rit, I can't even say it. Rit, ritual. We say ritual. Rich, rich, ritual. Ritual is like a tradition, something that you do out of habit, um, something that is done repeatedly. So for example, my morning ritual is to get up, brush my teeth, wash my face, um, and then before I get my daughter up. You can also have holiday rituals, religious rituals, family rituals. Um, so on Valentine's day, my husband, <laughs> my Valentine's, 
uh, ritual with my husband is to wear a matching t-shirt. <laughs> it's true. And last we have breed. Breed, B-R-E-E-D has one syllable, breed, and it's past tense or it's um, to breed is the verb. Uh, so sorry, it's not past tense. To breed is the verb. Bread, B-R-E-D is the past tense. To breed means to um, purposefully have animals mate to produce more animals. So for example, a, a dog that is a golden doodle, somebody has bred a golden retriever and a poodle and made a golden doodle. So it's purposely having animals breed for certain reason. We don't usually use the term breed when we talk about humans, okay? Okay, let's talk about these words. So the first word is noble. I've gone through all the words um, generally for their definition, but let's go through them again. So the definition is having, showing, or coming from personal qualities that people admire, like being dignified, excellent, and honorable. Um, so to say somebody is noble is a compliment. It means that they are a good person with good morals. So let's look at this. Number one, it was noble for her to admit to cheating before we questioned her. Now, you might have some pushback here because you'd say, Emily, how would it be noble of her if she was cheating, that those are opposites? But you can make the claim that she told somebody she cheated before they questioned her. So she came clean. So even though she cheated, um, she had the morals to tell them before she was caught. Number two, he has so many noble characteristics, so he cannot be the one who stole the jewelry. So in this sentence, we're saying that the person could not have committed the crime because they have so many noble characteristics. So they're honorable, they're dignified, they are trustworthy. Number three, we want a politician who is noble instead of someone who tells lies. Now, traditionally speaking, a lot of people think that politicians are not noble. They are dishonorable. Um, so that's why we are saying here that we want a politician who is noble, who is trustworthy. Um, but those are very hard to come by. So thinking about how to use noble in your life, you can use this to describe somebody. Um, and you can use this to talk about other people who have good or bad morals. This next word is commence. And remember, commence is a formal way to say start. So the synonyms are start, begin, initiate. The antonyms are conclude or stop. The semester commenced in August. This isn't correct. This is from last semester. So we can say the semester commenced in January. Number two, I will commence studying at 7 p.m. tonight. Okay, we're talking about the future. I will commence studying, okay? Number three, you may commence your exam now. So you know we can use this as start, right? This semester started in August. You may start your exam now. I will start studying at 7 p.m. So it's a formal way of saying start. This next word is bounce, to move up and down with a lot of energy and excitement. To spring, to leap, to bound. The opposite of bounce is just to be inactive, to not move. My friend can bounce a basketball a hundred times a minute. She was so excited for the movie to start that she was bouncing up and down. Like, oh, I can't, ex I can't wait. I can't wait. Little kids do that a lot. Please stop bouncing the ball in the house because you may hit something. Now this word bounce, we're talking about it because in our reading, they're talking about animals bouncing their head up and down and their feathers bouncing. Okay. So animals can bounce and move like that as well. This word absurd, remember we talked about this as being silly, ridiculous, crazy, foolish. Um, it's an adjective. The opposite is normal. <laughs> so look at our example sentences. Don't be absurd. I cannot hold my breath for three minutes. So don't be crazy. Don't be ridiculous. Number two, the movie was entertaining, but it was absurd. It was totally unbelievable. So if you're describing a movie as absurd, it means that it's so not believable 
that it's ridiculous. It's silly. Her humor is absurd, but she makes me laugh every time. So her humor is foolish. It's silly. It's goofy, but it makes people laugh. So absurd, it's not a severe word. You know, you can say stop being absurd and be joking around, or you can say stop being absurd. And it's, you know, more like be serious about this. Um, so I think another opposite of word of absurd is serious. So in your normal life, you can use this a lot, you know, talking about people or things that are ridiculous as absurd. This next word is prominent and it's an adjective. It means important, well-known, easily recognized. Um, the opposite is common or ordinary. So we can say that uh, Taylor Swift is prominent in the US music industry. Or Dr. James is a prominent figure on campus. Everyone knows him. The Empire State Building is a prominent building in New York City. So prominent means easily recognized, well known. You can use this with things and people. This next word is evolution, it's a noun. And it means the process by which changes in plants and animals happen over time. So I think change is a really strong synonym. The opposite would be stagnation, which means to remain the same. So scientists say that humans evolving from apes is a sign of evolution. Online learning is a result of an evolution of face-to-face -face learning. So you can see that we can use evolution just itself, like in uh, sentence number one, or we can say an evolution of something. Okay. Online learning is an evolution of face-to-face -face learning. So it means that something has grown out of something else, an evolution of something. Many plants and animals have undergone an evolution to survive in today's world. So we think about the animals and the plants that we see today and how different they were hundreds of years ago and why they have had to change. They've had to adapt to the present day. So again, we see an evolution, have undergone an, ev an evolution. Another word, another way we can say undergone an evolution is just evolve, okay? So evolve is the verb, evolution is the noun. Harsh is an adjective, it means unpleasant, difficult to accept or experience. Another word is harmful, the opposite is agreeable or pleasant. So the weather in Alaska in the winter is so harsh that people struggle with their mental health. The feedback the students received from their teacher was harsh, so she could have been nicer. The insults that Alan's dad said to him were harsh. Harsh, unpleasant, or difficult, okay? So we're talking about the winter being harsh, the feedback from the teacher being harsh, and the insults from the dad being harsh. Unpleasant, difficult to experience. So if you think about something that is harsh, it's usually something that you undergo, you know, something that is harmful. Um, so we can say the weather outside is harsh. I'm freezing. We can say that her treatment of me is harsh, which means that it's unpleasant. It's not okay. Undergo is the verb. It means to experience or so in to endure something difficult. So to go through something hard. Um, the opposite is like to stop. You don't continue going through it. Um, so remember, we have undergo, undergone, and underwent. So let's look. She underwent surgery yesterday, so I'm bringing her over some food today. The breakup he underwent was terrible, but he is with someone new now. When I moved to the U.S., I underwent cultural changes. So all these are past tense. You can say, we have undergone surgery they have undergone breakups. Um, I will undergo cultural changes when I move to a different country, probably. I will undergo difficult times when I'm separated from my family. So it means to endure something difficult for a certain period of time. Ritual, an act or series of acts done in a particular situation and in the same way each time. So you could say a synonym for this is 
act or ceremony. Um, there's not really an antonym. Uh, so my morning ritual starts with brushing my teeth and ends with taking my dogs outside. When I visit new countries, I love to learn about the rituals of the locals to see how different they are from mine. There are certain rituals to follow when someone dies. So if we think about ritual, it means that things that are done in a particular way and they are meaningful. Um, I'm sure you can think of rituals that you do with your family, rituals that are based on your culture. Um, lots of times this is surrounding um, holidays or certain times of year. Um, so it's very common here in the States to go through the ritual of spring cleaning. So when spring comes, you clean out your house, you get it ready for summer. Um, and that's the ritual of spring cleaning. So I want you to think about what rituals do you do? Um, yeah, I'd love to hear about them. All right. I think this is the last one. So breed. So to breed means to produce young animals, um, through sexual reproduction. So another, uh, a word for this is mate. Um, the opposite of breed is to destroy something or to kill something, um, because breeding is to bring life into the world. So the breeding rituals of many animals is complex and special. Um, so if we remember what we've read about from this unit and uh, unit 2A, you know, different um, animals have undergone, they've, they've evolved through breeding. Um, so each generation is slightly different. Uh, yeah, and breeding rituals, if we think about the birds bobbing their heads up and down and dancing, it's really interesting. Number two, my dog growing up was specifically bred, so past tense, to be a purebred poodle. However, now I have two rescue mutts. And that's true. My dog growing up was expensive. It was specifically bred to be hypoallergenic. Um, but now I rescued two dogs from from um, uh, rescue organizations and they are not purebred. <laughs> All right, number three, farmers encourage their animals to breed for productivity and produce. So farmers usually breed their livestock, like their cows or chickens or pigs, so that they can uh, bring in more money and they can produce more materials. Okay, so we're not gonna do small group practice since we're on our own. So what I would like you to do is to create sentences with your vocabulary words. Um, and so, I actually only have nine here, so it looks like I'm missing one. Um, so you can go back to the slide at the beginning of the PowerPoint and just practice making uh, sentences. Now, something that I can use a lot or that I do use a lot is the um, is the uh, app, I'll say, called Grammarly. And so Grammarly can help you fix your grammar um, when you're typing in sentences. It's grammar, so G-R-A-M-M-A-R ly.com um, and you it's free and you can use this to work on your sentences you can also plug this into you know google docs and have them check you um, if you'd like to share your sentences with me via email that please go ahead but if not um, that's fine as well you can share them with your friends your family members or just double check them using um, you know your grammar check whether that's Grammarly or uh, whatnot. Um, and you can do that in your own time. So create sentences uh, for each of these vocabulary words. Okay, so in this class, we discussed birds and animals from our home countries, threats to these animals and what we can do about them. Hopefully you brainstorm some ideas and you're connecting to the material. We talked about the vocabulary words pronunciation and you saw the spelling. And we discussed the meaning and the use of the vocabulary words. And then you all in your own time practice your vocabulary words in writing. Um, so looking ahead, uh, so you are going to um, you're going to do complete unit 2B homework assignment that's due on Wednesday. You're going to complete the project number two assignment, which is due Friday. And you're going to complete the quiz, which is due on Sunday. Um, you don't have to do these in order as long as you get them in on time. So if you want to do the quiz today, that's totally fine. If you want to do the project by Tuesday, it's fine as well. But you need to make sure that all of these assignments are getting in on their due dates. If you have any questions for me, though, I'm happy to um, 
and happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, please make sure you've uh, read unit 2B thoroughly. Um, otherwise, it's going to be really hard to do the assignments, especially the homework assignment. Um, okay, next week, we are going to start our novel. Uh, so look for a message from me about that. Otherwise, um, good luck on this. I'm sorry, we won't have class this week, but I hope that you found this uh, useful. All right, thank you so much. Bye.